the great resignation. How do you come on the other side of this thing as a winner? Well, before we can talk about how you can come on the other side of the great resignation as a winner, we have to think about what the actual root causes of this thing are. We have to really understand what the problem is in order for us to be, create, be creative and come up with a solution that we all can think is, is, is useful and meaningful. So I wanna share with you a couple of facts and a couple of statistics that I found to be tremendously meaningful um, when we talk about this, this notion of the great resignation. I mean, because I'm sure you all have had um, plenty of exposure to it through the news, through CNN, through CNBC, uh, all that kind of stuff. And everybody's talking about it, everybody's writing about it, and it is a big, big, hairy, scary deal. Here's the issue. Before the pandemic happened, corporate America, in and of itself, in its own reality, needed to produce. They need to have the people that work in corporate America specifically produce at 30% more than they were before. That's the number that makes our collective economy happy, so to speak, 30% more productivity. That's what they needed in order for everything to keep humming along the way it's been humming along and for all the stockholders and for all the shareholders and for everybody that were at the top of the corporations all over the world to really, really be happy with the returns that they were able, they were able to get out of um, their organizations and so on and so forth. So I want you to think about that. So put that in your head for a second and, and let's, let's ask the question. 30% more productivity. This is before the pandemic. Could you imagine if you were working hard already, you were already stressed, you were already feeling like I'm giving the best I possibly can, but knowing that even more was going to be asked of you to produce more. Can you imagine how people felt at that moment? This is before the pandemic. Can you see how difficult it might be for people to figure out how they can bring more when they already are feeling overwhelmed, when they already are feeling undervalued, when they already are in a situation where stress is at an all time high? Because those are the statistics that we were facing before the pandemic. We were already facing a situation where workers all over the world globally, especially in Western economies, we're feeling like this is too much, this is unsustainable. And then the pandemic happened. And all these changes started to come into place. People were downsized, people were right-sized, people were forced to work from home. Corporations and organizations were forced to embrace new technologies and new systems. It forced industries, certain industries grew precipitously and like it, it was it was crazy what happened for Amazon for Zoom for some of the organizations who were able to embrace technology quickly and move forward i don't know about you but my church grew by 40% because of the pandemic it was already a big church but because they already had uh, audio visual capacity and all, all kinds of wonderful uh, technology experts and sound and video and everything, they were able to make this pandemic actually work for them. And now the church that used to be a local church is now a global church, you know, uh, and they've used every tool they possibly can to grow. And they're giving more back to the communities in ways that they never could before um, because of the, the, the massive amounts of influx of people and capital that this growth has brought them. So I say all this to say, you know, the pandemic has, has created some losers and some winners. And I think the questions we have to ask ourselves back to the three questions, who am I? Am I who, really who I say I am? Am I all that I ought to be? It gives us a chance to re-ask those questions for ourselves. And it gives America the same chance. It gave America a chance to be reflective. People were home for the first time 
for 10, 12 hours a day when they would normally be out in the workplace, they were home. They were with their families, whether they were taking care of elders in their house or young people in their house or multiple generations of family members in their house. They were experiencing that at the same time as they were experiencing their workload. And they were realizing that they haven't been there, that they haven't really um, contributed anything more than a financial contribution to their household. And there was more that was much more that was needed than, than kids. Some people saw that and they realized that, oh my God, I can't continue to do this. I'm being asked to do more in the workplace. Now all these changes are happening in the workplace. Plus, I'm at home with these, these children that have multiple le levels of um, uh, learning. And I'm not a teacher. I'm not, I'm, I'm certainly not an online teacher, and I don't know how to deal with that. Plus, you know, I might have, I have, might have elders in my household that I have to, that have to have care. And um, that industry is beset with people who are caretakers have to now be responsive to this massive pandemic, and you can't get the care you need on top of all the stress and the mental. Do you, do you feel the pain? Do you understand where I'm, did I paint an illustration for you that helped you understand how deep this problem is for everyone? And I'm sure you feel that, I know, I know many of you have had people in your family um, whether that's either had to deal with uh, the, the ravages of COVID-19 or whatever new variant that there was, Omicron or Delta, or even the new variants that are coming out. I'm sure you've had to deal with that. Some people have had losses that they've had to try to figure out how to respond to or you know, deep health, uh, health and illnesses that they've had to figure out how to try to respond to. All of this is the cause of the great resignation. But what we find ultimately from the workplace, there are three great problems. And these problems, again, were here before the pandemic, but the pandemic itself caused sort of the, what do they call it? The straw on the camel's back mentality. Three great problems, here are the problems. One, people were asked to completely and, and, and deal with unsustainable workloads. Unsustainable, no one could do all the work that was required for them to do. Two, people were feeling like they did not have the appropriate response in the organizations that they work for, for mental health and wellness. Again, let me repeat, and I will say this, and I'll probably say this again, health insurance is not a health and wellness program. It's health insurance. And insurance is not necessarily going to help, help you get done everything that you need to get done from, a, from an emotional and uh, physical well-being structure, you know, uh, situation. So in the workplace, there has to be more in order for you to have the kind of balance that you need to have if they're going to ask you to produce a 30% higher level. Number three, the feelings of isolation and loneliness were already there. Middle managers, lower level workers, even executives in companies and organizations were already feeling like they were alone, that they were by themselves, like no one understood them. Um, they were already feeling like they were disconnected uh, from the chain of leadership. They were already feeling like they were a part of the manufacturing process and they weren't being considered as human beings in the process. That was already happening. And then the pandemic happened. And people had a chance to sit down and ask themselves some questions. Why am I doing this? What is this all for? How? Can I negotiate this in the future? This cannot be my life. These are the things that people were complaining about. These are the things that people were experiencing. 